Hello viewers, you are watching Mojo for Industry, India's first mobile journalism platform for industry. Germany is India's largest trading partner in Europe and among India's top 10 global trade partners. Bilateral trade between Germany and India in 2018 was valued at more than 20.41 billion euro. Today, more than 1,700 German companies are active in India, providing around 4 lakh direct and indirect jobs. VDMA India acts as a bridgehead between the German machinery manufacturers and Indian industry. Today, we have Mr. Rajesh Nath, Managing Director of VDMA India with us to talk more on what needs to be done to increase trade activities between both the countries. So welcome Mr. Nath. So Germany is one of the major, major uh, trading and investment partners of India. What makes India a preferred destination for German companies? Uh, India is very keen, uh, Shubhajit, when we look at uh, their interest of India. India is keen to attract German investment or German companies in, in certain specific areas. For example, uh, smart city infrastructure, also in areas of uh, mining technology, energy, renewable energy. I think that is also one of the very focus areas, food processing is another area where I think food processing packaging, where the German government has expressed interest uh, in attracting German investment and German companies to India. That the German companies really have been trying to support uh, the vendors also, which are the suppliers to the German company and their own employees also during this COVID period. And uh, I think one good part is that uh, which will really help also the local industry, Shubhaji, is that the German companies are looking to increase their sourcing locally in India. I think this we have from many of the German companies to try and mitigate the risk, uh, supply chain uh, risks. So one of the decisions that many of the German companies have taken is try to build a local supplier network of course, this will take some time, but I'm happy that already initiatives in this uh, field have started. And I think maybe this will bear more results uh, next year or the year after. And uh, I'm happy to share with you also, Shubhaji, that the last survey we conducted in November, so uh, we found a remarkable uh, improvement in the sentiments of the company. And uh, whereas in the earlier survey when we had done in the month of uh, June, June, July, almost I think 65% of the companies that responded that business for them was slow. Uh, that has changed, uh, dropped dramatically from 65% to less than 30% now. So I think the German companies in India are getting back on track and the business is improving. One of the uh, aspects of COVID or pandemic, why it has hit everywhere so badly has been that it is not only the supply side, but the demand side also has been impacted and the workforce has been impacted also. So I think perhaps this is for the first time in the global history of manufacturing that uh, demand, supply and workforce have been impacted. And that has also had an impact on the German companies uh, who are uh, operating in Germany or in Europe. And uh, as per the VDMA forecast, uh, we are forecasting a dip of about uh, 6 to 7% in 2020 in the turnover of the German companies in Germany. And uh, for next year, uh, certainly the, the picture is a little better, but we are going with cautious optimism uh, and we are predicting about a 2 to 3% increase next year. Uh, for the uh, German companies uh, operating in Germany. Whereas in India, I think uh, the German companies are much more optimistic and are looking at a growth of about somewhere in the range of about 7 to 8% in uh, 2021. Uh, uh, I think infrastructure sector, that is going to be the biggest driver. In fact, I think not only for German companies in India, which is, but if we really have to uh, start back or kick back our economy or bounce back. I think the government spending in infrastructure is very important because of the multiplier effect it has on the core industries also, be it the 
cement industry, be it the steel industry, uh, or the capital goods industry. And I think that is very important that the government spending in infrastructure continues, uh, e-commerce sector, and with that, connected with that, the material handling sector, the logistics sector, these will see a growth. Then another area where I'm very optimistic is in the energy sector, especially the renewable energy. Because of India's thrust on renewable energy and increasing the share of renewable energy in the in our total pie of the energy pie. So I think these are again, and uh, German, Germany has been a forerunner or one of the strongest uh, producer of uh, when we talk about wind energy. So I think these are certainly some of the sectors where there is going to be good growth. And also from the reforms during the COVID, I think some of the reforms that the Indian government has undertaken, for example, the reforms in the mining sector, I think that can also help and drive the Indian economy and increase the contribution of mining also uh, to the in the GDP of the country. But I think in the long run, agriculture sector, mechanization in agriculture sector should also come and help to increase the productivity and yield for the farmers in India. Another sector uh, is the uh, healthcare and pharmaceutical sector. I think with the COVID healthcare sector, pharmaceutical sector, the investment that is going to happen here in these sectors, I think these are going to be immense. Even uh, construction equipment is a segment where uh, you know, uh, German companies are doing fairly well. So, and they have they localized their production, as you said earlier. So uh, how do you see that segment, that particular segment is uh, going to perform? Infrastructure sector is going to be one of the prime drivers of our economy. And their construction road buildings, uh, the projects the Indian government has undertaken, I think it is very important that these investment in these sectors uh, are undertaken by the Indian government. And construction equipment sector, we have some very well-established German companies who are operating here in India, companies like Schwingstetter, Putzmeister, Herrenknecht, Lieber, who have a good case. These are the large companies who already have a good presence in India. And in fact, we have Schwingstetter is investing further. They are setting up a, a new greenfield plant. And I think once this uh, plant is in operation, they would be able to offer a much broader range of machineries in the uh, infrastructure road making sector. And uh, this can certainly help and support uh, the Indian drive to increase the investment in the infrastructure sector. And also another point we have to consider, Shmulit, uh, I think our development in infrastructure is very important. If we really have to, we are talking about uh, becoming a $5 trillion economy. So become a $5 trillion economy. We need investments also coming into India. I think our uh, infrastructure sector really needs a boost. And this can certainly contribute in helping in ease of doing business, reducing the cost of operations, the cost of production in India. And so I think infrastructure sector is really linked to a lot of aspects. And it is important that India's drive continues in the infrastructure sector. Whether it's construction or manufacturing, especially the robotics and uh, renewable segment, what you mentioned rightly now, which are the major companies who are going to you know, set up their facilities or even make some big announcement or in near future? Can we just, do you have some information? Uh, sure. As I mentioned, Schwingstetter is already in the, is setting up this new greenfield projects. We have a lot of other German companies also who are perhaps uh, not, setting up new projects, but expanding their existing facility. And also another area, Shubhajit, as you correctly mentioned, I think what the COVID has shown is that India would need to go into applications of automation and robotics uh, in the future. And I think this is one of the learnings what companies would need to derive from COVID is that a certain aspect of automation needs to come in if we have to build the systems to become resilient and to some extent to have processes in place. Uh, this is very, very important uh, for India also, Shubhati. And uh, as BDMA, we have always advocated that it is not necessary for the company because let's take the example of 
industry 4.0 of smart manufacturing. If we look at these aspects, it is not necessary that from the beginning you need to have the complete gamut or the whole range of industry 4.0. What you need to uh, move is to take baby steps. That is what I strongly have been advocating. Take baby steps based on your financial capacity. And uh, as we know, Shubhajit, the Indian, we have almost more than 63 uh, million MSMEs, uh, SMEs in India. And what is needed is that they are adequately supported and the growth of the uh, micro and small uh, enterprises also takes place because they together would help unless they grow. The Indian growth story would not be complete and they are supporting also. In fact, the MSMEs are generating almost 120 million jobs and uh, almost contributing uh, uh, a good amount, almost to 30 percent of GDP of the country. So I think the growth of the MSME sector in India is very essential, and it is time that the MSMEs also look at certain aspects of automation. Because when we are talking about making India, it's not just about making India, but we also need to have quality products produced in India. So, in fact, it should be made in India with quality what we actually need in India. So, the Indian government in the previous few years, they have uh, announced very ambitious missions like, you know, Make in India, then Atmanirbhar Bharat, and very recently, the Vocal for Local. Now, how do you see the opportunities for Indian companies in Germany? Let me share some data which I think uh, would highlight also. In fact, India has invested about 7 billion euros in Germany. Uh, and we have almost, there are a good number of Indian companies. We have somewhere around 250 Indian com companies uh, operating in Germany, especially in sectors of IT, automotive, pharma. And why is uh, Germany attractive for India? In fact, Germany is the center of Europe. And Europe with around 450 million people actually is one of the largest markets that is there. And this is a good location for the Indian companies also. And especially with the technological strength of Germany and the R&D spending that Germany has. So investing or setting up an operation in Germany can certainly benefit the Indian companies to get good technological inputs uh, to show a local presence and to act as a gateway for Europe. And I'm sure with the passage of time, we will have more and more Indian companies looking at possibilities in Germany, in Europe. And I'm already seeing a shift, Shubhadit. It is not only the large companies, but now we are finding a lot of mid-sized companies, family-owned enterprises who are interested in setting up operations, setting up base in Germany. And the German states, somewhat like our Indian states also, are quite keen to attract investments from India. And there are many states like uh, Northern Westphalia or Bavaria, who are offering a good hand-holding start package also for the Indian companies who are interested in doing business in Germany or establishing themselves in Germany. So, uh, I think we are going to see a good bit of business development and the bilateral trade, as you mentioned, is somewhere around 21 billion euros between Germany and India. And I think there is a scope for this bilateral trade also to grow with the passage of time. And I think I'm very optimistic that the next period will see a good development of the German trade also. So, uh, what are the actions to be taken by, you uh, know, the policy makers as well as the industry uh, players, especially the associations, to increase the trade activities between these two countries? Uh, being a German industrial association, uh, VDMA had recognized the potential of India quite early. And in fact, the VDMA office in India was amongst one of the first foreign subsidiaries or the earliest foreign subsidiaries of uh, VDMA. Uh, we had put it in Frankfurt. And the, in the Indian operations, what we do primarily is we are like a point of contact for new German companies coming into India in the engineering sector 
We have almost about 600 of the members who are already present in India. We mm -hmm. can support the members who are in India. And what we try to do with the German companies is also try to build a strong network of the German uh, companies here in India and uh, interacting with the German with the companies as well as trying to enable them to have a link with the Indian industry also. But on the other hand, uh, Shubhajit, also we try to help and support Indian companies who are looking at German technology or possibility of tying up with the German companies. So there also we are extending uh, a supporting arm to the Indian companies also if they are particularly interested in any German technology, we can help and guide them. So certainly we are being promoting and I think it has borne also fruits, Shubhajit, if you look at the uh, uh, the trade in the engineering sector, Shubhajit, this has increased almost six folds in the last uh, 14 to 15 years. And uh, I remember when I started with BDMA almost a good uh, 20, 24, 25 years back, so that time the companies, the German companies used to ask, why do we need to come to India? And now it is no more a question of why we need to come to India. It is where can we establish ourselves in India? So I think there has been a change in the sentiments of the German companies also. And they are looking at India much more, uh, with much more keen interest in uh, business development here in India. And also I think uh, India is a sourcing hub for the German companies. Very well said. So, with that optimism, uh, what is the kind of you know, uh, trade volume we expect within the next five years by 2025? Any anticipation? Now? Generally, as a, uh, presently, we are at about 21 billion uh, euros, Shubhaji. And uh, I think certainly maybe next one or two years as we come out of COVID, maybe a little slow, it may take some time. But I think uh, there is a potential of the bilateral trade to grow at least 8 to 10 percent year on year. And uh, I'm sure if we are able to sustain this 10 percent growth, then I think uh, in, we should be touching somewhere around uh, 30 billion of bilateral trade by 2025 or 2026. I think that potential certainly is there. Uh, of course, on the other hand, we have to also consider Shubhajit when the German companies, while we have more and more German companies who are setting up operations in India and investing in India and manufacturing in India. So when these companies are, their production would not be reflected actually in the bilateral trade. So because they are more functioning like local companies. And uh, I think that is another very important aspect that the German companies are looking at India with a long-term view or a long-term investment. It is not just setting up sales or service offices, uh, but they are looking at establishing manufacturing setup in India. And we also have companies who are already present four or five years in India. For them, now the next step is to look at manufacturing possibilities in India. And I think this is a good step forward and shows the confidence of the German companies in the Indian market. So one quick last question before uh, ending to decision. Uh, do you expect any big announcement from the Indian budget for the betterment of this bilateral uh, trade relationship? Because now only a couple of months to go. There has been India and European Union have been in discussion uh, for the uh, India-EU free trade. And I think this is high time that we make this agreement. This has been in discussion for many years now. And in fact, uh, now when we are, uh, especially when we look at the development after pandemic, uh, and one important point I would like to highlight here, Shubhajit, if you give me two minutes, I would like, I think it's a very valid point, is that actually India needs to go up the global value chain. This was rightly pointed out also in the economic survey. In fact, the government has identified certain network products, uh, for example, in the electronic sector, in the IT sector, in the infrastructure sector, where actually India needs to contribute to the global value chain. And a 1% increase in global value chain participation, Shubhaji, can get almost a 1% increase in the per capita income of the people in India. 
So this is very important that India is really looking to increase its share in the global value chain. And I think here when we talk about Atmanirbhar Bharat, we should not consider it. Uh, there is many misconceptions that are talking about trying to make India, isolate India from the world. But in fact, India should be more open, very important. What actually, why we have not been able to contribute very high on, our, on the global trade platform, Chubaditis, our exports are actually, 70% of our exports come from the small baskets. When we talk about, for example, cotton or footwear uh, or petroleum products, whereas it's only 30% of our exports which come from the big basket. And actually, it is this big basket which we need. This can happen if you look at sectors like automotive, we look at electronic components. But what we need to do value add. And unless we are able to do this value add, I think this is very important for India because we do not want to be constrained as or be limited only as a low cost supplier. Because if you talk about low cost supplier, you are actually doing very little to the value addition. We want to go up the value chain uh, of the free trade agreements. And that is why the EU-India free trade agreement can certainly benefit India also in increasing their value share because when you have more, you are doing more R and D work. Right. You are doing more value addition. This can really help and benefit the India company also. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for running out of time and very detailed insight you provided, and that's for across the spectrum. Uh, with that, we wrap up today's interaction with uh, Mr. Rajesh Nath, Managing Director of EDMA India. Thank you, Mr. Nath, for being in the show and. Uh, speaking about what needs to be done to increase trade activities between India and Germany. He said that uh, India can, uh, this trade, uh, trade relationship between both these countries can go up to 30 uh, billion euro by 2025. Viewers, stay tuned for more, many informative interactions and please don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon. Goodbye.